Jose Neves joins us today. He's the chief executive of Farfetch, which is one of London's hottest fashion and tech startups. He tells us why Paul Deneve's departure from YSL to Apple was so significant, and also why wearable technology could be such a big part of Farfetch's future. This is Guardian's coffee shop in Shoreditch called Hashtag Guardian Coffee, where we've been doing interviews with interesting people, with entrepreneurs, investors and developers from London's technology scene. Today, welcome to Tech Sessions. Thank you for having me. This is Jose Neves, who is the chief executive of Farfetch. Um, now, Farfetch, for people that haven't found the site before, is just one of London's flourishing fashion technology companies. Um, so give us an overview, what do you do? Uh, Farfetch is a community of independent fashion retailers um, around the world. So we, um, we aggregate uh, the, the, the most interesting fashion boutiques uh, from all around Europe, from the US, uh, South America as well. And so it's over um, 18 countries and over 300 um, independent retailers now. And uh, from a consumer perspective, it's really the opportunity to shop the streets of Milan, Paris, LA, but also Riga, Sao Paulo, um, without fetching for your passports. And what was the advantage of aggregating boutiques rather than going directly to designers to kind of wholesale their clothes, if that's, if that's an appropriate term for designers? That's a great question. Uh, it's, uh, it's their unique point of view in fashion. Fashion is an extremely long tail um, industry. There are thousands of designers, um, hundreds of thousands of, of uh, great products out there. And the role of the independent uh, boutique as a curator um, uh, is historic, in fact. I mean, you can trace all the big designers back to one independent retailer who found them and, and supported them from McQueen and Browns here in the UK, Kenzo and Beefy in Milan, Alduca da Osta is a, a star in Venice who was the first customer for Burberry 60 years ago uh, outside the UK. So, and trying to convince Burberry that the jackets were not just utilitarian, but they could be fashion and obviously it was a, a good idea. So, you know, they are the, the guardians of newness in fashion and it's really, really important to support that independent community and, and that is very relevant for the industry, but uh, fundamentally for the, the fashion lover out there. It's a way of editorialising um, indeed, fashion in indeed. a way, or you know, presenting certain kind of brands and, and, and styles. That's almost your kind of front of house for certain... Absolutely. Things. These, these uh, boutiques, and, and we carefully handpick them, for, you know, they, they are definitely the, the best curators around the world. It's not just any fashion star. Uh, but, but these boutiques, they have survived because they have a very different viewpoint in fashion. Uh, some of them have survived 50 yards from huge department stores. And you look at the Americans, it's a, it's a department store dominated market, and our boutiques have, uh, have been there um, year after year uh, with a very different fashion proposition. And, and that's why it's so relevant. That's why um, their, their viewpoint, it's... it's um, uh, and, and it's also global, it's a global viewpoint that, that appeals to people from Australia, to Hong Kong, to, to the US, uh, all around the world. Now we would say that London is the best place in the world for the intersection of fashion and technology, but how do you balance being supported by that network of other fashion companies and also maybe being competitive with them as well? It's a, it's a topic and a subject um, that we often talk about and it's, there's no doubt London and it's the best place for a digital fashion uh, startup. Um, you have you know, a great um, uh, design, creative uh, fashion community, um, and, and then you have a great ecosystem in terms of tech as well, uh, which is getting stronger and stronger. So you can definitely find all the metiers in London. You know, if you want to find an online marketing person or um, a fashion uh, visual merchandiser and, and great retailers as well, by the way. So, uh, I mean, brick and mortar retailers and, and department stores. So, so the retail experience, the tech and, and the fashion and creative industries, they're all very strong in London. And, and you look at the, the big uh, success stories in, in fashion, and they, they're British. 
So. You've said in the past that you are quite techy and you first coded on a Spectrum, which is a bit ageing, but I had one myself. <laughs> um, what's the advantage then of being um, a CEO who understands code and who's a bit of a geek? Because most CEOs, um, certainly of London startups, um, are, tend to be a bit more business focused. I think it's uh, actually it becomes more and more um, valuable as, as the business grows, I think, because in the beginning, uh, when, when you're creating a marketplace like Farfetch, um, it's really the dynamics of demand and supply and, and how do you get the best sellers and the best products online and then that brings you know, the best customers and, and, it's, and it's a virtuous um, circle and, and getting that going is the most difficult thing in a marketplace so, and, and that has nothing to do with, little to do with technology and, and you have um, amazing businesses that for, like uh, I always cite First Tips, for example, who start like a really curated selection of antique retailers, and the website was great, but was not you know uh, avant-garde. It was just a, a normal website or nasty goal. You know, it was just a great um, uh, curator of fashion, and and, and and so that part, the, the knowledge of the industry. I think in the beginning of the business to get it um, going is more important than the tech side. The tech side helps you when, when you really need to start pushing product and pushing um, innovation to really leverage the, the business. And uh, to me it's a big passion uh, since it was my first company when I, when I was 19 years old. My, my first startup was a, a, a technology startup actually, uh, which continued and then eventually merged with, with Firefetch in 2007. Uh, so it's, it's good to now be able to play a little bit. So what took you to this point though and why is now the right time for fashion and technology? Why are there so many companies in this space? I think it has been uh, growing very fast for the, the, the last decade. Um, if you look at the, the early 2000s, uh, Boo.com went bust spectacularly, um, year 2000, 2001, that, that was the year. Um, that ASOS and, and Metaporte and Ux um, and, and other great uh, fashion, digital fashion companies uh, were emerging and, and uh, the growth has been spectacular over the past uh, 10 years. So it's, it's been happening for a while, but I think now definitely it's gearing up. Uh, if you look at, at fashion as an industry, it's a huge industry, but the percentage that is transacted online is still very, very small. 10% uh, give or take 15% in some markets, 7, 8 in others, but let's say uh, as an average. Um, so there's, a, there's 90% of uh, transactions actually ha uh, happening in brick and mortar stores. Um, and if you compare it to music or books or, or other categories, even in e-commerce like consumer electronics, it's a completely different scenario. So there's, uh, it's a huge global industry with uh, lots of room for, for growth. And, and I think new technologies, um, obviously, you know, faster websites, higher resolution pictures, uh, streaming video, um, smarter uh, recommendation engines, machine learning, in the future, visual recognition, Google Glasses, wearables, you know, all, all that I think it's, um, it's compounding to, to, make, um, uh, to make it a very, very exciting time for fashion companies. And also, we can't talk about fashion and technology without talking about wearable tech. It's one thing having technology to sell clothes and another having technology in them. Um, what are you watching in this space? What do you think there's most potential in? I think it's really, it will be really uh, fascinating to see uh, how things progress in, in the next uh, year. Um, if you look in the past, all attempts to merge technology with, with fashion, they were really limited to sportswear and, you know, uh, Nike fuel, fuel bands and that kind of thing. Um, and the, the luxury industry and, and the high-end industry were really allergic to anything uh, tacky. Um, and, and even, you know, mainstream fashion wasn't um, adopting any, you know, gadgets. Uh, but the added value of those gadgets was also uh, negligible, so it was a, uh, they were a gimmick. And uh, right now, it, uh, that that is changing. And I think, on, uh, on on one hand, these machines will be really powerful with, with uh, real added value for people. On the other hand, the fashion industry has learned that technology um, has become a, a, an object of desire. 
you know, and, and there's lots of talk of why Apple hired Paul Deneuve, the, the, the CEO of uh, Yves Saint Laurent, uh, who happened to be in Apple uh, in, the, in the 90s. Um, I know him well and, and I was actually very surprised by, by the move. Um, but it's very interesting to, uh, to see that you know, the, the luxury companies and fashion companies are learning with Apple and on how to, to build uh, the, the desire and, and the global uh, brand, which is very, very strong. And the, and the other way around, Apple seems to be wanting to uh, learn some tricks from the luxury industry, um, certainly for their wearables or something to do with that, we don't know yet. So it's, it's going to be exciting. Farfetch has just had a redesign on its homepage. Can we expect to see a wearable technology tag on there sometime soon? It's, it's, not, uh, it's not in the pipeline because no one knows what these things are going to be. There's no uh, SDKs and no, the no uh, APIs that we know yet. Um, we would love to be approached by Google or Apple to be early partners in that. You know, so if, if, they are, if they listen to this, I... Well, they can sponsor the tab for you. There you go. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and, and we would love to be early adopters of that because uh, I think it's, it's definitely going to be very exciting and relevant for fashion as well. Really interesting. Um, uh, Jose, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.